Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode 13 of season 2 here at Fulham. We're in the January transfer window. Thanks to our pretty terrible form recently, we are out of the top four. One game away from the halfway stage of the season. Still very much in contention for a top four spot. Moving further away from a potential title challenge. But with regards to the transfer window, I've not too much available to me. About 20 to 22 million pounds, depending on the wage demands of any player that we decide to go for. Which isn't that much at all, to be fair. I've got some players on the uh, transfer list that I'm trying to move on, including Rui Fonte. It's uh, high wages for a number of players here. Fonte on 78, 85 for Johansson, 54 for Reem, and 52 for Adoy. But I've had multiple offers for Reem and Adoy, and they just don't agree contract terms with anyone that wants to buy them. It's infuriating. Uh, Johansson, hopefully, we'll get a bid in for him. We'll be able to move him on. And Rui Fonte, I've literally just put him on the transfer list at the beginning of this episode. So hopefully, we can move him on as well. With regards to shortlist, they still only have Luciano Vieto left from the in real life signings that I would like to make in this save. There are a couple of others that they made in real life that I'm not going to do in this save, like bringing Mitrovic in full time. Uh, Sergi Rico, the goalkeeper they signed on loan, I'm not going to sign him either. But for the time being, I can't get Luciano Vieto because it. it it says that he's recently joined the club, even though he hasn't. So he's unavailable for purchase. And I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that I want to sign right now. It's a question of squad depth. We currently have enough squad depth. We just don't have the quality in depth. So it's a case of just replacing people in certain positions. So it's a, it's a sell to buy. There's no point buying someone at present with the money I have available to me because I can't afford a player that is really going to be an improvement on anyone that I've already got in any given position. The board is starting to get a little bit antsy about my lack of playing uh, Timothy fosu Mensa. As you can see, they want me to either start to use him or send him out on loan. So what I'm going to do is actually start to use him. Cyrus Christie has been a very good servant for me, but fosu Mensa is higher rated. Do a quick stat comparison. Physically, fosu Mensa has him beat. Technically... Cyrus Christie is the man that is a little bit better on the ball, but in the tackle, Fosu Mensa is better. And as a defender, you want to be better defensively first. So that's why I think we'll go with Fosu Mensa over Christie starting for the foreseeable future. We'll see if we can improve his morale and then hopefully he'll want to stay longer term. Uh, with regards to any potential signings, I'm going to need to raise more funds first. But like, I, like I said, there's no point buying someone for the sake of buying someone because they're not going to be good enough to warrant having at the club. Cabano is a player that I would consider letting go, but oh, he's on 80 grand a week, which is a lot of money. And I could I could improve my rotation wingers. That's somewhere I definitely could improve. But do I need to improve? We've got Scherler and Ryan Cessna as my current starting wingers. And with Cabano and Aite as my backups. Now, I could definitely do better than Cabano. Definitely. So let's negotiate, especially considering he's on such a high wage. I could almost, I could always move some money across and uh, try a little bit to improve the overall financial transfer budget wise rather than relying on the wages. Uh, 7 million is what they've offered. Uh, if you'll give me 8, I'll almost certainly sell him. They give me 7.4. They give me 7.8. I'll most certainly sell him. And they'll settle for 7.8. Okay. Well, it looks like Cabano might be leaving us, meaning I'd then be looking for a winger. I'm not really looking. There aren't any areas where I'm, where, you know, it's glaringly obvious that I need a new signing. So it's a very difficult position to be in. Now, Tom Kearney is a fan favourite at. Uh, at Fulham, and he is one of my better players, so I'm going to reject that deal. Although I would consider replacing him in the starting lineup with someone that's better, of higher quality, but I don't want to replace him in the overall squad. That's kind of where the sale or potential sale of Johansson could come in. And if I sell Johansson, then I could buy uh, a replacement 
first team replacement for Kearney and drop Kearney to the bench. However, if Cabano leaves, then he's going to be the man that I look to replace. So we're, we're at a difficult crossroads at the minute with regards to say It depends who leaves as to who comes in, position-wise. Looks like Cabano's going to leave. If Cabano does go, then I shall replace him position-wise. But we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Let's jump in now to the game against West Ham. See if we can't get three points. Adrian starting in goal for West Ham. They're going five at the back. Lang, Benatia, Diop, Reed, Masuaku. That's a strong and physical backline. Obiang and Julian Weigel at CDM. Lanzini at Cam with two up top. Those being Javier Hernandez and Marco Arnautovic. That is a strong team to play against. Bryant. Well, he's making the run there, Siri. So it seems... Only logical to try and use him. Oh, perhaps slightly fortunate that the ball found him. That ball was meant for Ryan Sessegnon. We've given it away. Anguissa will try and win it back. I'm tugging at the shirt trying to get the ball off Lanzini here, but he's just too fast. Julian Weigel. Chicharito to Weigel again. Lovely ball out wide there to Masuaku. Floated into the middle and Chicharito heads over the bar. Or is it a corner? No. A miss from the Mexican. His first immense on the run from right back. Oh, that's a show. Look, looks to play the one too, but Masuaku's stayed with the German. Seri will get the ball out wide here to Bryant. And Sessignon was just offside at the moment I wanted to play the pass, but Seri in space. Oh, Masuaku's just too strong for him. Jean Michel Seri was certainly in the best position to shoot there, but he just couldn't get the ball under control thanks to the attention to the very strong wing back that was with him. Catrone turns. Oh, that's in, surely. Oh, what a wonderful finish from Patrick Catrone. Fulham won West Ham nil as we should have scored through Seri. We have scored through Patrick Catrone, and that's one of the best goals he's scored all season long. He's banged a couple in like that and come close, most notably against Chelsea, actually, in the last episode from distance. But that is gorgeous. Slightly fortunate with the, uh, someone the size of Diop in front of him that went through his legs, but keeper no chance. Look at that. Perfect trajectory. What a goal. 1 0 Fulham. Inside to Seri. And the corner to Catrone. Well, if you're going to back off me, I'll do it again. This time, Easter Diop able to get the block on it. And it's out for a corner only. They learn their lesson, West Ham. Seri with the delivery. Underneath this could be Catrone again, actually, but headed away by Pedro Obiang. Varnier will keep it in. Just knock it back to maintain possession. Oh, See the ball on to the far side. There's supposed to be that space. Ryan Sessignon and someone in the middle to aim for, please. Or oh, maybe no. Kearney inside there to Seri. Will just reach Catrone. Kearney's made the run again. He's got some space to move into here, but just the sheer physicality of this West Ham side means that I'm never really very confident when trying to hold the ball up. That's good football, though. And Kearney draws a good save out of Radjuan. Perhaps could have taken it a pace further. A but decided just to make sure we got the ball oh, on goal. Bosi Mitz is head up, wider the target. And out of it. Back to Weigel. Aubiang around the corner to Lanzini. Stepping in maybe, no. Aubiang, advantage played. Weigel around the corner to Aubiang again. Does look for Arnautovic, back to Obiang, and the Spaniard equalises. This is a well-worked move from West Ham. It's a very well-worked move. 1-1 at the London Stadium in first half stoppage time. Reed, nice little drag back. Ball played over the top, please win that. Barney 8, it's done well enough. Wasn't the most convincing of headers, but we've still got possession. Here's Andre Schurler. I always forget that he doesn't have four-star skills. I always want to do like a Ronaldo shop or a Berber spin or something and I'm never able to actually pull it off. Here's Andre Scheller in the box again. They're on his left foot. I'll pull that back. No, it's meant for Anguissa. It just... I feel like that ignored completely the direction that I... that I tried to play. It's lovely football. And then when it gets in here... Look at that. I think it's just because when I play it, Seri is level with me, but I'm trying to lay that back to Anguissa. And it's just played it into Seri. I can get the shot off. Oh, God, that's frustrating. Right, can we do something from the corner, maybe? Seri with the whip. And Geese is underneath it. Away. Well away. Seri's still there. We'll look for him. Jean-Michel. And Catrone, good touch. Good tackle by Michael Lang. <sighs> Counter-attack from West Ham might be dangerous. 
Here they come. Obiang out to Masuaku. Arnautovic down the line. And he's in behind. This is dangerous. The Austrian. Oh, that's blocked by Brian. Stop them from getting a corner. I can't. After a corner at one end, they have one at the other. Arnautovic is going off here 10 minutes into the second half. Not sure who's come on in his place. Lang delivers. Diop chests that down, but away from goal. Winston Reed into Obiang. Session intercepts, but Obiang's just too strong. Trying desperately to get the ball back. There we go. And Catrone. Again, they, I just don't have the physicality at the minute. I think it's Felipe Anderson that's come on for West Ham. Weigel into Chicharito. Nice tackle by Varnier. Worked that out wide. Dart down the line. That wasn't quite the dart down the line I was after. Kenny through to Catrone, who's onside here. And Catrone's shot is blocked well by Reed. Game's opening up now. It's getting very end to end. And sort of the throw. Back to Kearney. There's Anguissa. Seri's making the move. Anguissa's probably one of the few players I have in my team that can deal with the physical approach that West Ham play with. Here's Yarmolenko. 1-2 with Lanzini. Obiang to Yarmolenko again. Good football. Julian Weigel. Nice tackle by Kearney, but can get the benefit of the physics engine there? Man in the midfield. Here's Felipe Anderson. Back to Lanzini. Get the tackling nicely done by Anguisa. Forward. Forward way well. Weigel over the top. He's onside here. Keeper has to come and punch. Good decision from the man between the sticks. He needed to do that. Here's Pedro Obiang. Still West Ham look for a winner. Still we look to clear it away. Maybe catch him on the counter ourselves. To get a winner for the away team. It's good football. Lang into the middle. Again, Rossi punches. Win this, please, Joe. He hasn't. Lanzini with this spectacular. And Rossi holds on. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to take Seri off and bring Jetson Fernandez on. And then I'm going to bring Cabano on for Andre Scherler and see if we can freshen things up out wide as well as through the middle. Brian down the line. Sessignon with space to burst into. Maybe Benatia with me. Inside there to Catrone. Support arriving. Here's Anguissa and Kearney. A look for Catrone who gets there. Good first touch. No strength though. Masuaku out muscles him. I've got players with the strength to hold off players like that. But then they don't have the pace to get into the position to use the strength in the first place. So it's a, a difficult one right now. That was a poor pass, I have to be honest. Ten minutes to go. Still waiting for my substitutions to be made. 1-1 one, one here, time ticking away. We hang on the run. Seri trying his best to close oh, him down, but tiny little Seri's not going to win it back. Although, to be fair, tiny little Joe Bryan did. Catrone into Kearney, over the top looking for Sherlock. It's a good run, and he's onto it here, Andre Sherlock. He's got Medi Benatia with him. He's dancing one way, he's going the other. Andre Sherlock goes solo, Benatia gets the block on it. And it's going to be a corner only. Finally, my changes get made 10 minutes after we try to make them. Cabano off the bench, takes the corner. It's going to drop to Timothy Fosu Mensa, who's shot. He's tame and calmly blocked. Brian with the throw. Sessignon back there to Anguissa. Here's Fosu Mensa quickly round the corner. Catrone again! Catrone again! At the death. 89th minute, ninth or 10th shot of the game. Two for Catrone. Two for me, three points. Final whistle's gone here at the London Stadium. It's Fulham two, West Ham United one. We rebound from three straight defeats yesterday to start the transfer window with three points. We've Wolves next in 48 hours time, which doesn't necessarily help. They've got Watford at home and they're the late kickoff, although I'm pretty sure the extra hour and a half between kickoffs isn't going to make any difference really to their overall uh, fitness levels Edun is back from Barnet and Luca de Toro is back from Wickham wonderful, can't wait to throw them back into the starting lineup. he says with absolutely no intent whatsoever I might train. I might change up the finishing the finishing, I was reading that on Catrone I might change up the players that I'm training uh, in the next episode or two as you can see, we're now up into the top four again, thanks to that win at the halfway stage of the Premier League season. We're fourth, we're two points off third, we're five points off second, and we're seven points off top. Liverpool leading the way. Watford just a point behind us. Today's second opponent's Wolves are 12th, but only five points behind us. It's very, very tight for that fourth spot right now. 
And we're going to have to be at our best, but I'm also going to have to heavily rotate. Transfer for Varane Sessegnon. If this were real life, that might have to be 84 million to consider accepting. But Ryan Sessegnon stays, I think. Right, Wolves at home next. Here's Wolves. Rui Patricio in goal, as expected. Five at the back. Doherty, Miranda, Cody, Bennett, Douglas. Five, two, Price and Neves. Five, two, three. Martin Odegaard wide right. Diego Zota left. And Benic Afobi up top. Tammy Abraham and Brzezinski on the bench. Brzezinski was decent against me last time we played Wolves, I think. Right. Game on. Here's Odegaard. Back to Price. Ruben Neves, forward to Benikafobi, into Zota. What a finish, that would have been first time. Wide of the target, unfortunately for him, but that would have been a hell of a goal if it had gone in. 12 minutes in, nil-nil. Corner to Silva. Back to Barry Douglas. Back to Price. There's Neves. Cross to Odegaard. Good save. Corner coming. Corner coming. Can we get rid of it? Ruben Neves to deliver. You expect high quality from him, and you get it as well. Benikafobi's header knocks wide for another corner off after Alfie Mawson. Ruben Neves to deliver again. Another good ball in. Again, Afobi's there. This time wide for a goal kick. Cabano with a throw. In there to Adoy. Short to Johansson. Through the gap nicely. Lay out to Fernandez. Oh, what a lunge. I was just about to play that back to. Oh, still how. Somehow, Jetson Fernandez. Just kept going through. He couldn't be stopped. Just <laughs> bullied his way through. Unfortunately, he couldn't keep the finish down. That would have been a hell of a solo effort had it gone in. Nice from layout. Jetson Fernandez to layout again. Looking to replicate. Oh, desperately unlucky. Looking to replicate Catrone from the previous game. He got some bend on it. Quite a bit of bend on it. Let the keeper sprawling, but outside of the post only. Cabano forward quickly to Rafael Leal. Spins well. Oh, Jason Fernandez is there, and here's Floyd Aite. Wow, what a save from Rui Patricio. I was certain that was going in the back of the net there from Aite, and fingertip stuff stops it from doing so. Johansson delivers a corner. It's a decent one. Didn't quite read the flight of the ball, the man in the middle. And Benny Kofobe might come away on the counter, but Cyrus Christie's put a stop to that. Inside there to Cissé. But a space here for Johansson. Into Rafael Leal. Roll the defender. He's done that well, but he can't get his shot off. And Bennett and Cody work it away for Wolves. And we're less than five minutes away now from that half-time whistle. And it's still goalless here at Craven Cottage. Price through the gap to a phobie. Here's Silva. Great footwork from Diego Jota. I almost wish that had gone in because that was ridiculous. Still nil-nil just three minutes into the second half, but all oh, Wolves are getting dangerous now. Douglas. Douglas into a phobie. Missed the ball. And Diego Jota post phobie. Goal. Diego Jota is by far Wolves' best player right now. And he's the sole reason why they're in front. Benny Kofobi is the one that's put the ball in the back of the net, but everything is done by Diego Zota. 1 0 down. Need to step it up. Cissé. Make the run. Jetson Fernandez. Turn well. Turn well. Finish. Equaliser. Not behind for long. The home faithful can cheer because we're level. Jetson Fernandez with a lovely finish. It's just kind of opened up for him there. Get the ball get past one defender and then you have the space to put it away and put it away he has 1-1 one, one. Yeah, around the corner to Dennis Adoy looking to drive forward that's such a heavy first and second touch Dennis Adoy proving why we want to get rid of him there he's actually started to drop in rating now as well which isn't going to help with regards to his valuation but comparatively to his wages his valuation is minimal it's the wages I want to get back every week for my budget Here's Ruben Neves, swept up wide to Zyro. Nice tackle by Cyrus Christie. Again, still Wolves have possession. Ruben Neves. Cissé in the way this time. Poke that there to Cabano. Quickly forward to Rafael Leal. Back up wide to Cabano. Barely any time left in the game now. Here's Jetson Fernandez. We'll use Christie first. Could go back to Jetson. Will go back to Jetson. Oh, that's a nice turn. And again, looking for Rafael Leal. Can he get a nice turn? And yes, the shot well saved by Patricio. 
That was the chance they needed to take to win the game. It's going to be a 1-1 draw, I'm certain of it, as soon as they clear the ball away. And the ball gets back into someone's possession. The final whistle will go. It's, it's a 1-1 draw against Wolves. To be fair, their goal had been coming with the pressure they were putting on me. And I'm pleased with the way we fired back immediately. Still frustrated not to win. But after yesterday's episode, four points from two games. Very welcome indeed. Very welcome indeed. Will it keep us in the top four though? I'm not sure. Still not sure because we've got Blackburn next in the FA Cup. And Cabano's personal terms have broken down. That happens time and time and time again with almost everybody that I've been trying to move on for the past 12 in-game months. No one will sign a contract with anyone else. Someone please pay their wages because I don't want to anymore. Gremio offering for... Uh, Ryan Sessegnon no Blackburn next in the FA Cup but that will be tomorrow it's Blackburn and in West Brom no Stoke sorry I knew it was a promoted side I couldn't remember which it's Stoke the Premier League table though is what we shall end with drop the video a like if you enjoyed by the way subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on more we have Stoke next after the game against Blackburn who are 10th and then the final game of the month is actually against third place Huddersfield but we are still fourth in the table Still in the Champions League spots. Now a full nine points behind Liverpool, though, who are starting to open up a gap on everybody else. But all of the other big sides, other than Manchester United, sixth and below. Spurs, 13th. They'll be on 13 points, propping up the table by a long way. They look doomed already, although there is still half of the season, just less than half of the season to go. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I will see you tomorrow.